and we should be live. Oh my goodness, look at all the people here. Hello. Hey everybody. Hello. Good Hello. Evening. So Joe Sharp, Blues Coins, Ida's in the chat, Poppy Poppy, Points the Painted Texan, Eddie Jams. Hello everybody, I'm Gamo. Um, I, I don't see everybody and it takes Hiram, Scott Holiday, everybody hi. And I'm gonna start us out by thanking all of you guys for getting us to our 1K. Tonight's a, tonight's a bit of a celebration for us. We couldn't have done it without all of you. Some of you have been with us from the very beginning. Some are new, but we thank you all. It, um, we love seeing you here every every Monday and we just really appreciate all of you. So anybody else wanna say anything? I guess not. <laughs> I was on mute. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I'll say something. Yeah, yeah. We, um, the channel is officially at a thousand subs. I think it's still at a thousand, right on the button, right? Yeah. All right. So the the I mean, same tomorrow time, it may be back down, but yeah, yeah, back to nine ninety nine. <laughs> um, yeah, the narrative never changes. You know, we, we're here to grow with you um, and provide something that you just don't see anywhere else on YouTube. And that's a, a number of people that really like to talk about coins. We know our stuff. You know, you have questions, we'll take care of it. We're, we're consultants to you. And um, we want you to feel comfortable coming here. This is a safe zone for everyone. Um, nobody's going to get, you know, none of that stuff. We just get it out of our mind. Uh, but we are here at your service. And we want to thank you each and every single person in chat, everybody for your undying support of live coin Q and A. So thank you. 100%, yeah, thank you. Chris, did you want to say something? Not now, I mean, who wants to follow up after that? Jeez. Right? Uh, hey, Sean, all you, you know, first, all you have to do is bring up Ken and how you know that he would love to see this moment. Oh, wait, should be on TV, buddy. Not me. Uh, no, just pretty much the same thing he said, and not as many words. Uh, but thank you. You know, we owe it to you guys. We're here for you, and obviously, you guys are here for us. So we appreciate it, and you know, this just allows us to offer more and better content. So stay tuned. Speaking of which, we're giving another giving away another one of these tonight. Mm -hmm. Not to Shannon or Amelda. So you can't win again. Uh, that I was thinking earlier too, I wanted to bring one point up that I don't think we've ever talked about before. I know we say when you want to ask a question about a coin. You know, you can send us um, your coin questions, but I want to open that up to you guys. A lot of you are brand new collectors, and I want to tell you that if if you have a question that you know maybe you're afraid to ask somebody else or intimidated about or something, even if it's something like what is PMD, I don't I I don't understand it. People talk about it all the time. Any kind of question you you can you can email us anytime or post it on our Facebook group, um, or send us a message and say, hey, can you tell me what this is? You know, I wanna know, or just a simple question. It doesn't have to be about a specific um, coin. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that because we don't really get questions like that. So anyway, that's all. Um, I, I will go around real quick and let everybody introduce themselves. You guys mo know most, mostly everybody. Um, I'm Paula. I'm on you. You'll see me on Facebook groups a lot, um, and of course here. I don't. I used to have a YouTube channel. I don't anymore. I collect errors and varieties, um, exonumia, whatever I that that tickles my fancy. <laughs> Pool boys. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I. I really am cracking down and focusing right now on errors. Um, they fascinate me. I love the idea that I can own a coin that nobody else in the world has. So 
I, I just love that. Um, yeah, with that being said, Mr. Stanley. Um, hey, my name is uh, Jeff Stanley, and I uh, am in, on here almost every Monday. I also have my own YouTube channel where I have a little bit of content every now and then. I've been working on some stuff, um, had some technical issues that uh, have kept me from producing the last uh, couple of weeks or so. Um, but I've got some stuff that's recorded and ready to go. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a, um, primarily a variety collector, but I do dabble in errors. I certainly don't turn them down when they come my way. Um, I'll pick them up, uh, quick as anybody else. Um, I collect almost all series of, uh, U S, uh, coinage, um, a lot of world coins, um, a lot of other weird stuff too, like, uh, you know, transit tokens and, uh, just exonumia in general. And um, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't discriminate when it comes to the coins. Sean? Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. You know me as Blue Ridge Silverhound. I specialize in the long series of Susan B. Anthony dollars <laughs> and all of its varieties. Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> Liar. So I, I, I'm a huge fan of all sorts of U.S. type coins, Canadian coins. Um, been around hobby for way too long, and I guess I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going and uh, enjoy collecting money because uh, there's no better feeling than doing so. But that's me. On to the next. Adam Chambers, ghouls and coins, coins and ghouls. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, so I'm a I'm big into uh, varieties, and uh, I like the Lincoln Sense. Um, I like coin roll hunting, um, Franklin varieties. Um, I've got a pretty good collection going on my Franklin uh, variety series, and uh, I like a lot of coins. Though I don't just like certain ones. I I pretty much like any coin that, that interests me. So, and I like. Tone coins, those are those are something else that I really really like. So that's me. Mr. Rhodes. Unmute. Um <laughs> oh, I gotta get used to that. My stupid <laughs> microphone sucks, so I'm muting myself. Anyway, uh I'm Chris. Uh you guys gotta know me by now, except for the new people, but welcome everyone. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, thanks again for getting us to a thousand subscribers. That's really cool. Um, I'm excited about it. I know everybody else on the panel is excited about it, and you guys should be excited about it too. Um, just a little bit about myself. I am a longtime collector of pretty much anything uh, numismatic related. Uh, you know, I, I collect every series. I'm working on numerous series at one time, and I love varieties and errors. Um, I love U.S. and foreign. I also collect numismatic materials such as books and reference guides uh, and banks. I'm really branching out. Uh, so I got to slow down a little bit because <laughs> I'm spreading myself thin. But, uh, yeah, it's good to see you guys here. We got a lot of guys uh, or a lot of folks, I should say, men and women, um, interested to check out our coins tonight. We got a lot of good stuff to talk about, and uh, I'm excited about that, too. So. Sorry, there was two of me there for a second. I'm having, I'm having internet issues. I, I apologize, you guys. I don't understand what's going on. Um, that kind of sucked. But so. is there two of you? Not anymore. I removed <laughs> your doppelganger. Um, I removed the other one. It's down there in the basement, but we don't need her. <laughs> Carl. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations to the Q&A panel for a 1,000 subscribers, and they couldn't have done it without me. That's right. <laughs> but it, oh, all of you subscribers, we really appreciate it. My name is Carl, also known as CMUS Omaha on YouTube, and and I specialize and in, are interested in uh, Lincoln Memorial Sense and hunting a few rolls of those for varieties on those, and I have an eBay store that I sell my extras on and uh, I also like to coin roll hunt uh, 
circulated quarters, finding the varieties on those. And I like the W quarters. I also collect modern U.S. coinage. And uh, I'm learning right along with all of you uh, from these experts on the coins. And I hope that I can ask questions as we go that you guys might have questions about as well. And uh, I'll try not to echo as much next time. <laughs> I'll try not to echo as much next time. <laughs> I'll try not to echo as much next time. <laughs> oh, we for you guys tonight. You're a crack up. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So um, you'll see some people with uh, their names highlighted in blue in the chat. Those are our wonderful moderators. A um, couple of them are actually panel members. Coin Dragon and Blues Coins. Um, Big Red Bullion, he ran our link today on his stream and, and we hit 1K live while he was live and he actually got monetized today, so congratulations. There's Amanda, coin card hobbyist. She's also on the panel. She was on earlier, we lost her. So anyway, so with that being said, all of the yap, 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 um, we have some fantastic coins to show you guys tonight. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. All right. Our first one is not a coin, but it is, I thought it was a good question. So without further ado, further ado. Frank. Y'all see that? Okay. Yeah. So Bro, yeah. Or go, or go ahead and read it. Um, uh, from Al. Hello. Um, hello there. My name is Al and I've been watching your YouTube videos for a while and I feel like I can trust you for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to this. I've been collecting for over 50 years and my collection is massive and I have many of the air coins you've been showing. Thing is, is it's going to take me forever to sort through all my coins I have. So I need advice on what to do with them. Any help would be appreciated. And I thought that we ought to, you know, kind of don't take turns on this one and kind of go, go over, you know, throw out, you know, a tip or two um, of uh, kind of what we could do as far as organizing a large collection that's maybe gone a little bit unkempt or whatever. Nothing wrong with that. You know, my, I kind of had to do the same thing myself here recently. Well, I could save them a lot of time. Um, you can email me and uh, send them all to me. <laughs> That's easy, I'll pay, right? I'll pay you for them. That's easy. <laughs> I think it's the basics is it's going to be one coin at a time. And then grouping one coin at a time into groups of similar, not just denomination, but of similar varieties and categories, but it's still going to be a one coin at a time. I agree. It's not an easy process. Right. What you want to do is try and catalog them the best that you can. I know it seems like a huge undertaking, but if you feel like that they have any sort of value, I would do that. Not only for yourself, but you know, let's say God forbid, knock on wood, something happened to you and your coins had to go to somebody, a family member. It's always good to have a spreadsheet or whatever. Uh, or at the very least, your coins are in two by twos and they're you know, uh, descriptive on there. So just being able to do that um, you know, can, can help a great deal. Unless you're looking to sell them, then you know, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's really hard to find an LCS that that even knows what error coins are. Um, there are some, but most just don't even bother. Um, those are the ones we love because we can cherry pick them for varieties. But uh, it's so it's I don't think there's an easy way to do it with errors and yeah, varieties. And that, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I mean. It, how much time you want to invest if you want to invest a bunch of time and maximize your profits or whatever if that's if you're going to sell 
um, or even just to organize for loved ones to whatever. Uh, how much time do you want to invest? You know, you can go through each coin individually and look for key dates, look for the errors, look for the varieties. Um, or you can, you know, sell large lots. Um, you know, I do like Sean's idea about cataloging. And uh, it, it's just a, a fancy term for uh, creating a list of what you have. And uh, there are many good online sources that offer free services like that. I, I use one, actually. It's called Numista. And uh, it's, you know, they're hosting the information for you. You can type it in. It gives you all kinds of information about the coin. It gives you mintage numbers. In some cases, it give you, gives you values, although they're not very accurate, but close to it. Uh, it'll give you a rarity index, which is good for coinage, but it it doesn't work for tokens or anything like that. Um, and it actually gives you the ability to export that information onto a spreadsheet or a PDF file. You can print it out. So uh, I love that because you're not taking up space on your computer. Uh, you know, somebody else is hosting that data for you. So that's what I use personally. And it keeps track of all your different world coins. The, the feature I like about it the most is there's this big map on the main screen and it shows you uh, the world and all of the countries and every coin you have a country from, it colorizes that country and then it'll tell you how many coins from that country that you have. It'll tell you how many silver coins you have in your collection. It's pretty cool and, and quite extensive. So, you know, that's something that I would recommend if you, if you want to catalog it and with the picture that you're seeing up there right now that's important too you know make sure you label the stuff as you go through it or you're kind of wasting your time and you want to protect them too that's a big thing <clears throat> make sure they're all in flips and labeled properly i, was, I just yeah. want to show this to say that if you're looking for uniformity in, uh, in storing your coins, this is one way to do it in a in a homemade album of uh, pages to put uh, flips in. It can either be cardboard flips or it can be these vinyl flips like this. And put yeah, them um, Gabo, that, that's correct. Yeah, you missed stuff. Um, Christian Harch just did a video with the founder of Numista, and uh, he did a like a, a interview with him, which was pretty interesting. Nice. I'll add that my collection does not look like the one on the screen. On the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, I was what I did when I started going through mine. Um, you know, when, when I first started collecting, I kind of did like what a lot of people did. They, they throw them in albums, um, stuff that was just loose. I just kind of threw them in the box drawer or whatever, um, cut some degree of organization, but had never really cataloged them before. Um, then I finally broke down and decided one day enough is enough. I need to go through everything and try to split it up, figure out exactly what I had. Um, so I made a spreadsheet and if you don't, feel comfortable making a spreadsheet it's not hard um in fact the software is free you can go out to uh google sign up for google sheets and use their their, their uh their software it's free um and get in there play around with it try to figure out a system on how to how to catalog what you have um this is kind of you know one of my flips and this is kind of i've tried several renditions of my cataloging system this finally kept I've kept for me. Um, I've got the coin, it's protected. Um, I've got a nice little format there that I'm using for all of my flips, similar to, you know, what Carl's doing right there. His just looks a little bit different than mine. Um, then I use these boxes right here for all of mine. And I've got some of the other older cardboard type flips. Um, they have a similar cataloging system that I've got set up for them. Um, 
The other thing I would like to add for to make it easier, God forbid, it comes down to where a loved one winds up having to deal with your collection or whatever. Um, have them come into where you keep your coins or wherever and show them where maybe you keep the more expensive stuff. And that's the stuff they probably want to focus on first. Um, make sure they know what that is. We all have like the expensive stuff and we've got maybe the intermediate and then you got the junky junk. Make sure they understand not to probably worry so much with the junky junk stuff, but the expensive <laughs> stuff is the stuff they really want to focus on if they have to bring somebody um, from outside or whatever to uh, um, go through the collection, make sure they understand uh, what that is, you know, what, what the good stuff is and the uh, stuff that really probably isn't going to amount to a whole lot. Red, for you, you could probably just open up a spreadsheet, uh, start a spreadsheet, Google spreadsheet, and maybe um, number number your slabs, mm -hmm. one through a million, I don't know how many slabs you have, and then put you know next to the corresponding number on the spreadsheet what it is and what the value of it is. Um, a lot of people put what they paid and then what the value is now. Um, if you're looking for something simple, I would probably just put, you know, an approximate value, but it, you have to do work. It's not a guessing thing, you know, if you want it to be accurate. Some people do photography too, right? You yeah. can do it that mm -hmm. way also. Yeah. You know, yeah. here's a real easy way to organize your collection. That is an easy way. Get some yeah. albums and start filling holes you know yes. when when you when it gets to uh the varieties and the errors that's when it gets a little more difficult to to keep it in order but if you can kind of see behind me uh you know i have albums back there it's just yeah, their normal this. three ring binders and i have a label maker that i go crazy with and each one of those binders has something in it that i can't <laughs> find an album for so I, yeah. I I use the old fashioned staple flips. I know Paula hates them things, but I'm old school. I, I don't like the I don't like the clear ones. I, I don't like them. I don't like my coins just hanging out in random places. I like all my coins in the center. I want them centered and I want them upright and I want them to stay that way. And as long as you're smart when you open these up, you won't scratch your coin with a staple. Don't be dumb. Anyway, uh, I'm very anal about organization, and I'm not. you have to get albums. And, and if you're going to get an album, you get a good one. Just save up your money and get a good one. Don't get those cheap Blue Whitman folders. Yeah. They're going to ruin your coins if you don't store them properly. Get these good dance goes, or there's other similar ones out there. Hell, even Littleton sells a good high-quality album that has yeah. removable slides, and you can see both sides of the coin. And I'm showing this Jefferson nickel one off because I filled it up, baby. It's full every slot. <laughs> you know, they're my favorite. Oh, I, I want to add the albums of Littleton are the only thing I would buy from Littleton. Yeah, don't buy the coins. They rip yeah. you out. Yeah, good point. But, so but not, good. not doing anything at all is probably not the thing that you should just leave by the wayside. In some way, somehow, you need to label them. You know, the albums are great, you know, two by twos or whatever. Just do something. Because if you don't do it, you're just going to have a random pile. And it's going to invite just taking it to Coinstar. And we always hear just unbelievable horror, horror stories of that. So you, you definitely don't want that to happen. <clears throat> Whatever you, whatever works easiest for you. Um, like I, you know, I don't think it sounds like this guy has a huge collection and I don't think there's like any easy way. It's, you're going to have to take, gonna take time. Yeah. yeah. It's going to take time. You're going to have to sit down and just deal with it. It's not going to. He sounds like me four years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's much Seriously. easier to do it as you go than to try to catch up. What you got there? Pop. Here you go, Sean. Sean, have some. <laughs> I got dots. 
Bots. Thank you, Ravenhawk, for telling me about bots. I love that. Um, yeah, we don't talk about staples around here. <laughs> yeah, all it takes is one mistake. I, I ended up screwing up a decent looking mercury dime, and I'm like, F this, not anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. It only took me once. <laughs> yeah, you wise up pretty quickly. Ah, uh, thanks, Red. I don't know who she is, but she sounds fantastic. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the input on that one. Um, we'll move on to another coin here. Let's get an actual picture. All right. Good evening, Mr. Eubanks. Mr. Bob Eubanks. Bob Eubanks. Was that the newlywed guy? Uh, well, yes. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Oh, um, okay. From <laughs> Nico K. Check out this cool three cent nickel I just found. The reverse is really cool. I call it Snowstorm. Wow. I see a major clash going on there. Yep. That's Which my favorite is, thing about these. <laughs> it, gets, yep. it, it gets better on the reverse. Oh, wow. Goodness. We got lots going on in the reverse. Lots mm -hmm. of cracks and chips. And uh, look at it. Look at the die, die breaks above the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on the Roman numeral. Up yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It, here's that, what's that guy was, was near terminal right there. Here, here's what's crazy. Look how well it actually was struck. I mean, a lot of times you see weakness in those uh, vertical bars on the Roman numeral. Free. I mean, that thing was a decent strike. The the uh, or, but the, the the die was really wearing out. Oh yeah, look at the denticles. I mean, look at all yeah. the yeah. I mean, that die was denticles. falling apart. Yeah, it was. But that that's cool. I would rather have one like that than. <laughs> yeah, I like Wanda's comment. Would you just look at it? Just look <laughs> at it. Would you just look at it? <laughs> just look at it. I'm a sucker for the three cent nickels. I love them. They got some great uh, repunch dates on these, also. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, it's very. They're very heavy in the uh, die variety category. Um, the Kevin Flynn has an excellent uh, die variety book. It's worth. It's a pretty good investment, in my opinion, to. Uh, purchase that book because you can you can cherry pick these things um, and find some really good dive varieties. I didn't look too close at the page, but it's got one thing about these is these things are beautiful in every you know grade. You yeah. know, you have a, an uncirculated example that's near perfect. It's such a beautiful coin. And then you have this example here, and just look at all the things you got going on with this coin. It's a really interesting series. So yeah. much character, yeah. There, there's some tough dates. It, it's it's a really yeah. tough series. Yeah. To yeah, that is for sure. Yeah. Shut it. Shut it, 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 it. And a little, little, bit of, little bit of trivia, this was the first United States nickel. Yes, here. it was. It came out why, in. Why did they call it a nickel? But, but Red asks me that all the time. He's like, I don't understand why <laughs> they call. It why a did nickel? they call it a nickel? Because it wasn't five cents. <laughs> because it contained nickel. <laughs> Boom. 25 percent nickel and uh, wait, 20, 25 Is it? Is it twenty five? Uh -oh. All my where my oh my statistics are gone. Twenty five seventy five. 2575. 75% 70, copper, if you can. I get into that with red all the time. Why do they call <laughs> it a nickel if it's only three cents? Because it's made nickel. <laughs> you see that kind of dye wear on nickels all the time, though. I mean, I have a buffalo nickel I just got that was just looked like the dye was just, you know, they it was well struck, but it just had tons of dye crap. The harder the metal is, the quicker the dye is going to wear out. Yeah. And, that, and I think that's the reason for a lot of the earlier errors and, and uh, 
stuff that you see, you know, die cracks, um, terminal dies on the older uh, nickels like that is because they just, I mean, they were striped before that, they were striking stuff in silver and copper, much easier to uh, mint metal. Yeah, um, copper. Nickel was, uh, I guess they were not anticipating the hardness of the uh, new alloy. But you guys want to invest in something really worth your money in this hobby? Books, except for this book. Don't invest in this book. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good book. It's, yeah. it's kind of like a comic book. It's entertaining, but it's not accurate. You put that in the bathroom. You read that in the bathroom. By the toilet. Yeah. It's a it's a bathroom. I, I think, I think a, uh, a mad magazine offers more educational. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. A crack. Hey, before we go to the next coin, does anybody in chat know why a three cent nickel even existed? This is for the chat. Nobody answer. Well, oh, Chris, what are you trying to Not show us there, Chris? Chris? Chris, Chris is going off again. <laughs> I got him. I got him too. I got him. <laughs> I have the newer edition. It was fifty cents. <laughs> Aren't some Canadian nickels made out of steel? <laughs> got this one too. Hello, John Jacobs. By the way, that book is written by Spadone. Um. It, it's actually, I got it because it's quite comical. Um, what back in the, you know, back in the late 60s, early 70s, how it, to see how this hobby has evolved, errors and varieties, and our knowledge has evolved and stuff like that. Oh, smell the book. Smell the knowledge, Chris. Be careful that, you know, you might ruin your sinuses. <laughs> um, it, it, is, it is interesting to see that to see how the, how our knowledge has grown. I don't think back then they had a whole lot of knowledge about the minting process. <laughs> yeah, Pine Creek co coins, you're, you are correct. Although this day and age, I don't see how they could make a 48 cent coin for our postage today. So did you get your answer? I was reading chat. Yeah, it was uh, Pine Creek. He said for postage stamps. Oh. Back when people gave a spit about postage. Yes, you know, when I was looking at those, Thank you. When I was looking at those Spadone books, I, I came across another one here. Uh, this one tells me how to clean my coins. I really like this one a lot. I want that one. Oh, no. my God. Is, is, that, is that the official handbook? Is that the official handbook that Clorox gives all of its customers? <laughs> well, yeah, this comes from Hewitt's Numismatic Information Series. Whew. Sea Monkey Metals, uh, I, he was in Ida's this morning, and he's got a really interesting new mint uh, silver round that he's going to send us pictures of. Um, we need to look into that because, and I actually did look at those this morning and saw the inscription, how the one is supposed to say one thing and the other is supposed to say another. Um, he has kind of a mule on a, on a, on a round, a Nui silver round. It's really, it's really cool. So, yeah. So we'll be looking at that for sure. Cool. Yeah. But thanks for sending that in. I haven't seen it, but I'll look at it. But yeah, the guys are going to like looking at that. Okay. All right. Um, bear with me here. I had a little trouble with my software today. Yeah, so. we've had, so Amanda was on our panel <laughs> earlier and she's got internet issues. Jeff has had internet issues, so we're kind of scrambling a little bit today. So you guys are just going to have to be a little extra patient with us tonight. Have fun in chat. All I right, I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to pull this one up. Um, for some reason, my message. Uh, Jeff, message if you have to, just pull the pictures up and you can read the email. 
directly off of your thing if that makes it easier for you. I think I, I think I might I might just go ahead and do that on this. Yeah, one. instead of trying to pull up the question, just go ahead and you read the email and we'll just look at the, the oh yeah, baby. All right. So give let me go pull email. There's a couple coins that I'm pretty excited about in here. I get excited about a lot of them, but we have some good stuff this week, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, baby. All right. This is from Dean. I purchased this flip over Lincoln scent before paying. I looked again, then asked a pro on the YouTube on on YouTube sent photos. He said vice job. As I was writing the guy, Sean was on saying the same coin was the real deal. I'm a bit freaked because both of them have strong credibility. On Sean's Saturday report, he mentioned it. It's the 1970 flip over Lincoln scent. I I usually edit these a little bit. <laughs> See how the, okay, I, okay, he's having some trouble sending pictures at first. Okay. So I'm going to say something about this real quick, and then um, I think Chris is going to talk about it. I actually know who he bought this coin from. I found out when I was doing a little research on it. And Dean, anybody, this person that you bought this coin from, anything that you buy from them will be legit. So don't worry about it. I believe his name is Alan Morgan. I think that's what his name was. Hey, I, I'm going to tell you what, I, I am in the market for one of these. I would have bought this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Very it's nice. Beautiful. So, Chris, you want well, to talk I guess about I, I guess I'm up. Yep. So, first of all, I'd love to know who said that this was a vice job because whoever said that, you know, obviously – really shouldn't be in the business because there there are clear clear things that separate a real double struck coin from a vice struck or well vice job we use the term vice job to describe any coin that has been manipulated by man in between you know other coins whether it's in a vice or in a press or by using a damn sledgehammer i don't know but uh, you know, when you do that, there's going to be features that will will distinguish it from from something like this. First of all, if you look down on on his shoulder and look at the O and N of the word one, they're raised. Okay, mm -hmm. so first of all, that's that's your first indication that this is a real deal. Second indication is they are oriented properly so if this was only struck once and we looked at the reverse that's exactly how the word one would look if this were a vice coin or a press coin or whatever you want to call it a manipulated coin those letters would actually be in cuse or indented into the surface of the coin and they'd also be mirrored and backwards so th this is really hard to duplicate a, a, mint, a true mint error is really hard to duplicate. People can do it. They they use fake dyes, and there's really detailed ways to do it. But this is the real deal, and this is a double struck, flip over in collar strike. So the coin was struck once, and for some odd reason, it didn't exit the striking chamber. It flipped over, rotated obviously a little bit. Not much, just a little bit, and was struck again before exiting the striking chamber. Um, and, you know, there was a little bit of question about the authenticity of this one at first, um, but the more we examined it, we realized, you know, the, the question was, why are the words one so prevalent on the obverse of this coin? And the reason for that is, is because of the depth of the design. Yeah on the shoulder it's it's really it's actually it's raised on the coin but it's actually it's lower on the die it's in cuse on the die so it allowed for the 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 first strike to still be clearly visible in that area 
I'm more intrigued that we see such definition of the columns on the field in front of Lincoln's nose. Um, yeah. Usually that stuff gets obliterated by the second strike, but we were able to see some left over. But this is a beautiful example. And in my opinion, it, you know, I love the 1970 scent. I just love it. It's got a good look to it. Um, you can actually see a little bit of mint luster still hiding behind, you know, all around the rim, right around the raised areas. This is an, a, a decent looking coin and great purchase in my uh, opinion. So it's beautiful. Yeah. Excellent purchase. This, and, this is the part right here that I'm tripping out that the, you can see the bushes. Yeah. In front of the memorial right there. <laughs> Yeah, so I was actually the one who who talked, who had Chris explain this a little bit more to me. Um, it what I didn't think it was a vice job. <clears throat> I am a skeptic by nature, and I can tell you that they're getting really, really good at these altered, uh, alt, you know, post mint alterations on these. They're they're making things called soft dyes and stuff like that. So um, that was my, he had to, I had to turn, flip my brain around a little bit to, so, but he cleared it up for me. But I can tell you that we have a guest coming on in a couple of weeks that will help explain um, how you can distinguish between true mint errors and, and altered or fake. We're not telling who it is yet. You're gonna have to wait. Watch for the video, right, Sean? Yep, I'll give you guys a hint. It's the Monopoly guy. Frank. It's the Monopoly guy. <laughs> the Monopoly guy. I, I was hoping it was Scrooge McDuck. You, I'm not telling. Well, you guys already know. I, I will tell you this. I would love to search that money bin. I would have a field day. Right, yeah, dive right yeah. in. Yeah. I want to be that person who's who got paid eight, what was it? Eight eight hundred thousand pennies child support in pennies yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, a whole trailer full. <laughs> I, I yeah, I'm I'm not gonna comment on that. <laughs> I was, was it you? Say something really stupid. No, it wasn't me. I I would never give my pennies up. I know, right? That's um, a stupid question. I was reading in the chat. Some people thought it was a clash. So, um, should we clarify that? Why don't you tell us about that there, Adam? It's not a die clash. Um, yeah. The clash, uh, that wouldn't happen like that. <laughs> you wouldn't have the, you know, the opposite uh, design on each side. So that wouldn't happen like that. You know, this is a coin. Um if you look at the reverse, you can actually see the one and nine of the date next to the T and set. So you can even see that on there. Just just vaguely, but it's there. You can see the one. Clash, oh, yeah. you're, typically, you're typically not going to see, first of all, on the raised devices, things like that. On clashes, most of the time you see those in the field and they're not the actual device. They're kind of the outline of the devices that you'll see um, on clashes. So if you think of a clash as like the dies would be kind of like clamshells, two clamshells coming together, um, the, the, the highest point on those clamshells will hit first. Um, and you don't usually see clashes on the low points on the die when they come together, because it's like a clamshell effect. Sometimes you do. If those dies are worn at, worn down and, and the, the two dies come together exceptionally hard, sometimes you will see. Um, like on Kennedy on the ear, but that's not the high points on the die. That's still a lower point. Yeah. Yeah. That's or, a really you know, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a higher point on the die, not a lower point on the die. <laughs> another, another word of point that I think is very important. If it was a vice job, 
damn, the ribs on this one are really clean for a vice job. <laughs> yeah. Because, Absolutely. Yeah, when you're sandwiching a number of coins together, the yeah. rim always shows a lot of damage. You're going to yeah. see a lot of the in-cues lettering on the periphery of the coin that's being smashed into the you know the host coin um, it just gets really messy yeah good point well and you're never on a voice vice coin you're never going to see the wording in the correct orientation and like it is on a normal coin you'll never see it like that It'll always be a mirrored effect and like a backwards and in cues and upside down mm -hmm. That one was really cool. I didn't get a chance to see that one before the show when I was loading it up. Yeah, it's actually been in the inbox for um, for the week. Oh, <laughs> hey Dean, I'm glad. I had to, I'm, I had glad, to I'm, glad you were, um, I'm glad you were able to uh, to buy that one. I know you had second thoughts, but that that was a fantastic buy. Absolutely, and yeah. and I'm tr I'm still trying to get the sellers. Uh, I'm trying to get a certain person that I talked to about this coin to give me the seller's store information. <laughs> Cause he knew right. And this person that I talked to um, knew it's going to, it's the person that we're going to be having on the show knew right away who that, who that coin belonged to right away. See, that's the thing about coins like this. They're so unique. They're yeah. one of a kind. And after a while, they get sold back and forth a few times. You know, they start to get recognized. And um, in my opinion, on, on a coin like that, the value is only going to go up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not like more of them are being discovered. It's like, you know, yeah, like Chris had mentioned, they're being passed around. That's what I said in the beginning. That's one of my favorite things about collecting air coins is knowing that I'm the only one who has one mm -hmm. like it. Yeah, it kind, kind of builds up a little bit of provenance too. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, I talk a lot, so I'll read this one. How about that? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Hi team, here's a very interesting anomaly at two and 10 o'clock on the reverse. At first it looks like damage at the two o'clock anomaly due to what looks like scrapes. But when looking closer, it looks as if this is an error due to the folding of the metal. The folding of the metal is very prominent at the 10 o'clock position. Notice how it looks like at the 10. It looks like the rim's top layer was pulled off of the rim, exposing the next layer of the coin. I do apologize for so many pictures, but I really wanted to give you the best examples possible with different lighting that could expose or hide characteristics that could help break down the true anomaly error and or damage your feedback is greatly appreciated and we thank you don't ever apologize no. for sending us too many pictures yeah like lighting a lot of times is key i mean when you're looking at some of this stuff you you have to be able to flash it around move it around a little bit at different light angles to really get an idea of what some of this stuff looks like chris since you read this you want to talk about it let me show an obverse reverse. I'm pretty sure you guys already had a discussion about it, didn't you? We did have a discussion. No, we did, yeah. Oh, and then you're throwing me under the bus. I see how that works. <laughs> because you didn't it put in you didn't give us any input <laughs> in our discussion. <laughs> well, I like what I'm seeing. You know, it's it's a it's a high grade nickel, it's uncirculated, it's got some obvious issues going on there. Um it appears as though we, we see a lamination here. Um, I would have to guess it's a lot of lamination and maybe a little little possibility of damage. Yeah. Um, I see. Yeah, I see a little mm -hmm. scrape right there. Um, that's lamination for sure. That's where it's well. Peeled. I think what happened was if if you see that little lamination peel, almost looks like it was flipped over. If 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 you would flip it right back around, the curvature yeah. of it kind of matches. So I'm I'm guessing something caught on it mm -hmm. and peeled it away. 
yeah. Uh, so, so you had a lamination error that, you know, got caught on something and, and peeled it back. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, wartime nickels are plagued by lamination issues. Yep. Um, a lot of nickels it. are, really. Oh, yeah, you're right. They are. You know, and you can see that lamination kind of going down into the E as well. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it peeled off the edge of the rim as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Look at yeah. that. And that and and it kind of folded it up and pushed it over. Yeah. It's, it's still yeah. attached, so it's pretty cool. This would be one that you probably wouldn't want to send in for grading because they would probably reject it. Yeah, I was just gonna say, as much as I love laminations and stuff, looking at that coin that and uh, you know everybody who knows me knows I'm not a Jefferson person. But this is a beautiful coin, and I wish it didn't have that. Yeah. And yeah. I don't say that very often. Because this, if it's that appealing lamination, they will just send it right back to you. And I still, I still say I think there's some damage on there. I think they might kick it back as the details. Well, I think I think it was definitely damaged, and that's yeah. what caused the actual peeling effect. Yeah. You know, there obviously the lamination is part of the coin, but I, I think uh, it hit something, and that's what caused the peeling effect. Yeah. RPM, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm making sure we're not. Don't, don't even, I don't even want to look. <laughs> yeah, it's it really it really is, and I mean, it's got some dye deterioration. You can see kind of that orange peely texture, which is common. But yeah, I mean, look at that. It's not full steps, but it's got some, and that's. I think that that's a beautiful nickel, and I really do wish it didn't have that. It nickel. is the the luster and the surface. It, it looks like the original surface. The luster is very pretty on it. Um, it was well, it was well struck. I mean, I think we're just going to be short of uh, five full steps on it. But it, yeah, it is a nice coin dodger this, for sure. Yeah, this would this make an album, album piece. Just a put it beautiful album. album yes. piece. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This a would completely. Uh, yeah, this would. This would totally fit in with uh, some of my albums I've got. Yeah, and not a cardboard, not a not a no 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 folder. You need an album like Chris was showing you with the slides. Now I, I think if you're dead set on sending this in just to get it in the slab, the only company I think you have yeah. a chance for is Annex. Yeah. Uh, but yeah beautiful coin thanks for sharing I actually see a little bit of dye transfer going on there too yeah a little yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah right then yep. see yep. that line of the head which usually that tells you that there's going to be some weakness in the strike not the dye case deterioration here. it's a, it's a sign of dye deterioration you can see that with the orange peel texture so that's not a class you guys that's called progressive indirect design transfer um, and it's a, it's a form, it, it comes with dye deterioration. Yeah. Um, and you'll see that a lot on wheats, earlier wheats and, um, yeah, sometimes you see it pretty, pretty heavy. You can see it on the, sometimes on the obverse too, but more times than not on the reverse. Yeah. I saw this, I'm not sure what this is. The a little dye night. crack. Looks like a little die crack in the head. Yeah, there. looks like a die crack. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty. All right. What year was it? Was it the forty-four that had the the uh, re-engraved bow? Uh, what is that? Uh, FS 402, 401, 402, and 403. 402 and 403. What year was that on? Three, 30, 30, 38. Never mind. It was on the 38, I think. You're, you're talking about the no. reverse? The ribbon. I'm, no, on the proof. Proof. They're proofs. 38 proof. Yeah. Yeah. I For some reason, the the war nickel got in my head. Yeah. yeah. yeah 52 proof and 50 38. 38 proof. 
50, yeah, 52's got a, uh, yeah. a rare, a the rare. 38, I think the 38 proof is the one that has the FS402 yeah. and the yeah. FS403. Yeah. Good luck on finding a 38 proof. I got one. <laughs> Ooh. I have one. They're actually uh, pretty common. I don't have one. <laughs> Paula doesn't want one, though. No, I do. <laughs> I'll read this one since I uh, I kind of I uh, pilfered this. <laughs> that from this is uh, from somebody on a Facebook group, and I went and saw, and I liked the coin so much, I wanted to feature it in the show. So I uh, asked them if uh, we could uh, show their coin and invite them to come in and check us out. Dodger um, will like this one. Tyrone K. Tyrone. Tyrone posted this on Facebook, and I liked it enough that I wanted to feature it. It's a great example of a clipped planchet. I actually talked about this coin in Ida's. Did you? Yeah. It was that's, funny that you awesome. that you set it up for this for the stream tonight. Or that's no, it was on Rockies the night before last. I think I talked about it. But look at the year. Yeah, <laughs> look at the year. Look at that. You can see that Blakesley effect too on the front. It's it, it's I, that's what I liked about it because I thought yeah. it would give this a really good. Um, if there was somebody that was new to uh, clips, um, give us a chance to kind of talk about the Blakesley effect and some of the uh, um, diagnostics for checking these out. That is a beautiful straight clip. Yeah. Very nice, and the condition looks great too. Well, it should. Oh, it's perfect. You would hope, yeah, right? Brand new. <laughs> I didn't see it. Was that on a Denver or Philly? It's got to be on Philly. Philly. It's a Philly. Oh, yeah. It's one of ours over here. <laughs> Isn't that cool, Dodger? Easily mistaken. I know who you are. I'm not telling. <laughs> So this is, uh, so we've got a straight clip and something common with uh, clip planchet coins is, um, and this is, it, it, it's not going to be on every clip planchet. And if it's absent, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a clip planchet, but um, it is here on this one. It's the Blakesley effect. And what it is, is completely opposite from the clip from the anomaly you'll see a weakness in the strike opposite, polar opposite from it. And that's from during the striking because this metal is gone because it's the planchet was clipped before it was struck. Um, there is nothing for the uh, strike to push on to for it to strike up properly. So you wind up with some weakness on this on this side. And I think maybe the reverse has a better, not quite. Um, one other thing that I saw um, that kind of told me this is the real deal is the edge. On uh, sandwich coins, um, these are uh, um, where you've got, um, you know, copper nickel on top of a copper core like this. You'll see on this on the edge where the clip occurs, you know, normally on the edge, you'll see that little ring of copper or whatever in the uh, reading and the edge where the, where it's, um, um, where the clip occurs, you'll see on this belly line here, which is where it's, which is kind of the midline um, halfway through the coin. It almost, the, the, it flips. You see the color for the copper side is now opposite from where it is shown on the edge um you can also see a little bit if you go in close you can see a little bit of a breakaway where it was broken away um that's another diagnostic um and then just and this is the other diagnostic and i'm glad they included this picture with it is you can see how the devices kind of flow into the or towards the um the clip uh, that's a, that's a, another key diagnostic because again, it's during the striking process. There's nothing pushing the metal up into the devices on that die, so it, they tend to have that effect. 
right there. Just I thought that was just a cool coin. I, Can we see the reverse again, Jeff? Yeah. Another yeah, question. Answer question. I mean, ask your question, Dreadful. What, Chris? Another tell for me is the way the rim disappears mm -hmm. prior to the clip. Yeah. Flows if, in. if this were a manufactured clip, let's say someone decided to take their coin and cut a straight piece off with their bandsaw at home, that rim would be nice and full all the way to the edge of that clip. Uh, in this case, kind of like what Jeff was talking about, the device is kind of flowing outwards and, and getting weak towards the end. The same thing's going to happen with the uh, the the raised rim uh, towards the clip. So there's there's a quite a few diagnostics that you can look at to distinguish a true clipped error from a manufactured error. Like Jeff said, the Blakesley effect isn't always going to be present, although it, it usually is, but not always. And especially if a coin is in circulation for a while. Uh, it, it might wear down some of those devices and you might not be able to see the Blakesley effect. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of other diagnostics that you can look at. The, the, the biggest one for me is always the belly line on the actual clip itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to see in this picture, but if you would see one in person, you'll see that you can actually see where the clip finally broke free. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure they call that the, the belly line. Um, Jeff, can you get in going close real quick to quarter on the reverse? Yeah. Like right here? Yeah, I just wanted to show them. See how those uh, devices, the Q and U, are all flowing in towards the clip also? Um, you can even see the little striations at the top of the devices. It's showing the, the way the metal flowing towards the clip. That's another little, little telltale sign you can look for. Yeah, Shannon, the devices will be weaker near the clip on a real clip. Mm -hmm. Like see up at the top of the queue, like how the metal, how the, you can see the flow lines and how weak that is. And, Like if we went, it's spilling. Like if we went over here to dollar, yeah. Um, it doesn't look the way quarter does. No. You know, coins, cool. coins debated has a really good comment. The path of least Leaf resistance. Um, yeah. You know, water always takes the path of least resistance. Sometimes it's actually upwards, believe it or not. Water will actually flow upwards if there's le less resistance that way. But metal works the same way, and when they're striking these coins, the metal is actually being forced up, up into the devices of the die. In the case of this quarter, there's a, a large void around that lower edge there. So rather than the metal go up and fill the, uh, the, the devices at the lower edge of the word quarter, it's going to simply flow, flow outward. So that's, that's a really good uh, way of looking at it there. And what an iconic scene. Does anybody else love the, the design of this quarter? I do, I and I actually, the one of the things I love most about that clip is it almost looks like Washington sitting on, like sitting on a slope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, it's actually really good placement. It is really good placement. It is a it is a nice design, and the and it's it's nice to kind of do a last hurrah of the original uh, obverse design. To, yeah. As well, next year it's changing. Yeah, unfortunately, and, another another quarter program. Yee! I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, I like I like the new diver the obverse that they're they're considering. We should hear shortly here whether they're going to approve it or not. The, the new obverse is not, it's not really a uh, new design. It was actually the one of the original ones that was suggested back in '31. Um, 
why the heck are they doing something on the quarter again? I mean, do something on the the poor dime. Come on, do something on the dime. <laughs> do something different on the dime. My eyes are getting old. I don't think I could do the dimes. <laughs> but yeah, the dime. But why to... fart with the quarter again? Nobody, I mean, nobody I cares we've about all, dime. We've all just had enough. They just want to expand, you know, make us have to buy more quarters because we got to fill those books. Not me, but come I would, on. I would say they, should, they ought to go back to the 90% silver dime, but they can't even get silver to save their life right now. Yeah, and like I said the other night, okay, they have all of these presidents, these silver presidential medals that they can't give away. Send those back and melt them and make our dang Morgan dollars. That's all I'm saying. How long have they had those? And they, they'll never sell out of them because people aren't buying them. Come on, Mint. Send them back. Take them off of your website. Nobody's buying them. Melt them down and make the dang Morgans. I think it's all BS because there's no other world mint that's having any trouble making their silver coins. Why why the US mint? It's it's all a bunch of BS. <laughs> <laughs> They're biting off more than they could chew. They, they have all of these funky silver eagle programs this year that I think I think I think that's where the priority is. They have to make sure those run without a hitch. That yeah. or they just don't want to take any more heat about their stupid website. Yeah, their website sucks balls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let, well, you, you, really you, need that systematically. you put a 25, you know, per household it's, limit on a 300,000 yeah. minted coin, and then you wonder why people are getting pissed off. The, lim the, 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 the limit is the, the biggest problem with that. Blame, put the blame where the blame is. You no, know, all you're all all you're doing with that is you're al allowing profiteers to line their pockets. You know, my my humble opinion. Yeah. You know. Whatever. I'm getting on a rant now. I'm on yeah, a Kittle Michael stop. Kittle rant. Where's Michael Kittle? I'm on a Michael Kittle rant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, has, has anyone ever looked on? Uh, um, HSN to see if they're pre-selling these things yet? Of course they are. <laughs> or what's the other one? Coinball TV. And and what is that? Tabasco or whatever Tabasco sauce? I don't know what his name is. Rick Tabasco. Tabasco. <laughs> I don't know. I saw him selling two, two, a 2020 and a 2021 proof seventy. ASE um, for six hundred and some dollars last. I about pooped myself. <laughs> well, we have a question from a Confederate president. On that note, <laughs> <laughs> somebody else read it. Who wants to take? It? I came it. across this coin in my search. Is this what is called a Woody? And no, the photos are not edited in any way, shape, or form. Please help me out with this one. Oh, uh, hey, where's Frank? Where's Frank? He, he's a Woody connoisseur. Yeah, but this isn't a Woody. <laughs> Frank's gone. Ew. <laughs> Sorry. Well, yeah, you know, was... take a look at that rim. Look at the rim and notice how that effect that you see on the rest of the coin is not there. It's gone. Mm -hmm. That's because it's actually, you know, they always say dirty roller marks, but I'm not 100% sold on that theory, but it is some sort of dirt. Um, there, Something came into contact with that coin a long time ago and left some sort of residue behind and over time it darkened. And that's just, uh, unfortunately, it's not a real Woody. It's commonly known as dirty roller marks. So a dirty Woody. A dirty Woody. Now, yeah, I would if anything, you don't see these, you don't see this on BU coins. I mean, 
maybe a little teeny bit sometimes, but the the more the darker the copper gets, um, the more reactive, you know, because copper is super reactive, the darker these lines get and the more they show up. And you, it's only on one side. I yeah. actually have a theory about these. I know you do. You have a theory about everything, Chris. I love your theories. Well, I, I think it's a smear. I, I think, uh, you know, if I would put my thumb on the center of that coin and just press my thumb down and pull it straight up, we'd get a fingerprint. But let's say I was looking through a, a bag of coins and and my thumb scraped across the surface of that coin. Those same oils that would cause a fingerprint would cause streaks like that. And I think that's more than likely what this is because... I, you know, if, if these were roller marks, I think they'd be more uniform in size. Uh, they're too too thin, too small. It, to me, it's a smear, and I don't know. That's what I think it is. Either way, I, I do know it's not a woody, so. Dirt. It's grime. It's grime. Right now. I'm eating greasy popcorn. And you, uh, 1980, 1981, most common dates to see these on. Yeah. Like super common, super common. And I would love to find out if there is some process during those that year or, you know, somewhere around that time that they changed or did something different. Um, or maybe they got their their planchets from, or their you know copper from somewhere else, or their planchets from somewhere else. Something that was changed. I would love to find that out. A lot of those things you'll never find out, but those things I don't like unanswered questions, and I love to find those things out. But it'd I be interesting. I think during these two years after they did their, exper their experimental wash, they actually cleaned them with ShamWow. <laughs> I think so. I was thinking maybe they had people like licking them. Um, um, <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, man. Taste testing, maybe? Or taste testing. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Shannon. Uh, we, we do have Shannon. one of those uh, on our panel that collects... Well, while he collects the real deal woodies, this yeah. one is just, yeah, it's an imposter. Oh, I, oh, I do, I do too. I'm right there behind him. Now I'm, I don't have as good of a collection as, as Frank. Coin Dragon. Coin Dragon's got an excellent collection. I'm just, I was just looking, I pulled my album down. And I think my last Woody I've got in the set. Is uh, it's a nice uh, 1957, um, but you know, kind of after you know, in the early 60s, they changed, they pulled the tin out of the alloy mix, and uh, that was, I guess, that was kind of the the end of the Woody era. I actually have one that's half tin. Mm. Want to see it? Want to sell it? Want to see it? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not set up to, sh to, to, to show my coins tonight, so. Someday. Someday it'll be for sale. Yeah. I oh. actually got this one um, when Jeffrey Schumar and I went to see uh, visit Tim Rathjen. Um, I saw it on the floor in a, of his warehouse, and I picked it up off the floor of his warehouse. And it's then I saw, it a little, I saw it a little while lo lo later for sale. <laughs> um let's see you're an animal and, um, anybody else think jefferson davis could be abraham lincoln's twin where is it look it up what? all i know he was caught wearing a he, they, they caught him wearing a dress trying to sneak out of the south you can go ahead i'll look for this <laughs> you don't have to wait for me <laughs> oh we're not Oh, yeah, whatever. Whatever. All right, guys. How are the doggers? Dog. Oh, 
Paula, your bloomers are showing. Stop it. Come on. <laughs> are you looking at my butt? <laughs> By the way, while she's doing that, you got to check out her couch with her uh, coin pillow. Oh, my coin I, I pillow? Thought she, I thought she was digging in her couch for her coins. My coin pillows. You guys, go ahead. Talk about talk amongst yourselves. I don't no, know what the heck it is. We'd rather watch what you're doing. I'm having a heck of a time here finding it. Is that the last coin, Jeff? Maybe uh, no, sir. Good one, Shannon. Bloomers. <laughs> Bloomer. Yuck, yuck. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. All, All right. right. I'll hold up on the next one. Oh, that's it. Really, you guys, I don't. Hang on. I got to go to my microscope. Yeah, Captain Jig, I tried to get into that, but I'm so frustrated with that Oak, that Oak Island stuff. That See that? Can you go uh, not, always on, not always on both sides, uh, capital currency. Sometimes they're front, sometimes they're back, sometimes they're both. Uh, let me try to present that. Hmm? Yeah, I have, I have a few single-sided uh, woodies myself. So, yeah, it could be double, it could be single. There you go. Wow. That's cool. Look at that bad boy. I like how it made his vest dark. I know, isn't that cool? And there's the reverse. Wow. Beautiful color on that one. I didn't even look at the year. What year is it? 40 S. Okay. So is that because it's got too much tin? Yes. That's my yeah. belief. That's and it wasn't, it wasn't mixed properly. Yeah, it wasn't mixed properly. You know, sometimes metals separate when they cool. Here's one, yeah. for, here's one for you, Jeff. No. Since I don't get to show my stuff very often. Nice. Wow. There you go, Jeffrey. Or Jeff. Oh, boy. Ooh. Hubba hubba. I have a dime just like that. I know. Isn't that cool? So I nice. think this one's actually in seeing totally normal on the reverse. I think this one's actually listed on, on, um, on, uh, Cuts on coins. Is that the plate coin or it's just listed on there? Oh, I don't think it's I, I have no idea if it's plate coin or not. I bought it. I had it I had it uh, encapsulated, but I bought the coin. I bought it as a like a lot of twenty. <clears throat> yeah, and that's the same place, Christopher, that I bought that uh, Indian head uh, split planchet. Oh yeah. Anyway, okay, we can talk about another email. <laughs> that was Moving fun. On. I don't get to show my stuff very often, so thanks. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah. Oh, I did want to answer somebody's question here. If I send an email a little bit ago, does it get reviewed next time? Just wondering. Um, Dreadpool, yes. Um, we try. We try to do a cutoff on Saturday night, um, so that um, we've got enough time to process the photos and get ready for the show. Um, but we, we, we'll at least get you an answer um, and we'll let you know if it's gonna be in the show or not the next week. Yeah, 11.59 p.m. Saturday is our cutoff. <laughs> After midnight, we, don't, yeah. we look and at welcome, it, we, they go into the following. And welcome, thank you for sending something. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it won't be answered. Because if it because they don't all make it on the show, but they all get answered. Yes. So. Some take a little bit longer because sometimes they take a little bit more research, but hello. 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 
Christopher, you want to read this? Hey, from Arthur. <laughs> Basically, after a weekend of research, I know that this is a combination of the S over S over S over S RPM, the DDR FS501, and most importantly, the full torch designation do not exist on the same coin. I know the S over S RPM and the DDR FS501 live together on eight coins. There are a couple other varieties for this date and mint mark, but not like this. If I'm wrong and you can tell me where to find it, I will be the first to admit I'm wrong. I'm not asking for advice on a value. What I'm asking is this coin something that a place like Great Collections would be interested in. To me, if this is the only one, and I search NGC and PCGS, that there is a registry set collector out there that would be all over this coin. Anyway, thanks, and your input would be greatly appreciated. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Sometimes our input's not greatly appreciated. <laughs> well, we're going to give it to you. So we got a full torch. So he's asking if this is listed anywhere. It has to be listed somewhere. That's yeah, cherry picker. Yeah. And it's it's obviously it's listed on NGC because that's an NGC slab. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding the question. Yeah. Uh hmm. This is a this is a well known variety because it's a, it's a Phoebus Stanton. It's a cherry pickers guide variety, so it's a well known variety. I'm thinking he's asking if there's a if if they are, it's the the combination of the two. Um. Well, well, obviously it exists. Yeah, uh, because it's on yeah. this point. Yeah. And if it's on this coin, then there's most likely others out there that have the full torch, you know, uh, being this variety. Now, this specific variety, I'm I, without looking at Variety Vista, I don't know if they switched up the die pair at all. Sometimes you can have, you know, an RPM with uh, a, a, well, actually, no, this, this is a double die reverse. So, yeah. Yeah, this one would not change at all. So I guess the only the only difference would be whether or not this coin has a full torch or not. And if this one has it, there's a chance there's others out there with it. Without looking, I don't know if any others have been graded. Um, I can try to find it. Where um, I'm looking at it right now, uh, there is quite a few that have been graded. Okay. Um. And what's the highest grade recorded on this particular? 68. 68. Yeah. Full torch 68. What so, is, are you looking on PCGS or NGC? PCGS. So what did the 66 full torch, that variety, valued at? Uh, $110. So great collections would probably not be interested in that coin. They will. They'll sell it. Well, they'll sell it, but yeah. the seller is just not going to make what they would if they sold it by themselves. Well, Great Collections, only they only take 5%. So it's okay. actually better than eBay. Yeah, but don't, uh, the, I mean, the buyer has to pay a buyer's premium, right? Yeah, they pay 10%. Which most of the time when I look at a coin from Heritage or, or Great Collections, if I have to pay a buyer's premium, I'm not going to bid as high as I would if I didn't have to pay a buyer's premium. Um, I've sold quite a few coins through Great Collections, and they, some of them, they do pretty good, to be honest. Um, so do you think he would do better selling it through Great Collections as opposed to selling it by himself? He could try to sell. I would try to sell like maybe on Facebook group or something. If that, if he's really trying to unload it, yeah, then maybe try that. You would save yourself some money there, for sure. Um, because you got to pay uh, a three dollar minimum to list it. Also, through yeah. Great Collections. Shipping. Uh, shipping, you don't pay for that. Well, I guess you pay ship to ship it to them. Ship it to them, yeah. yeah. So, so the price guide said this was what one hundred and ten dollar value. Yes. So, in my opinion, it's a seventy five dollar value. You know those those price oh, yeah. guides. Yeah. 
Um, the last one sold for Stacks Bowers at seventy five dollars. Actually, yeah. yeah. See, so I mean, you know, why not just keep it? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe the confusion he's talking about, though. Uh, NGC lists this as an S over S over S over S. PCGS lists it as a S over S. So maybe that's where he's getting confused. It. It well, is the, it is the FS five hundred one. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, I'm looking at that. It's definitely the F, FS five hundred one. And I was looking in the cherry picker guide oh, to see what it would say. say. What cherry pickers guide say. And it's it just says uh, FS five hundred one DDR number one. And it doesn't say anything in the description whether about the RPM. No, no, so, but when I look at uh, PCGS, it says it's just an S over S. Well, you know, if you look at some listings on Wexler's and some listings on Variety Vista, and they're the exact same variety, they're not always in agreement either. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just their way of saying it's an RPM. It's an RPM. You know I mean? it, it's just their way of saying it's an RPM with an S over S. And Variety Vista says it's uh, S over S, S over S. So four S's. That's what Variety Vista says. So NGC and Variety Vista, they match. Yeah. You, you got to figure, figure that this coin is probably interesting enough that the people that want an example of this probably already have it. I, I know he had mentioned the um, registry set. I don't think that's going to help in, in driving a lot more sales for this coin um, because it's because of how interesting, and I'm not going to say unique because there's other examples of it out there at much higher grades. So I, I think the people that did want them, they bought the highest grades possible, and they're done. So, um, according to PCGS, there's only six graded higher. So there's 367s, 267 pluses, and 168. That's with full torch. So it's possible that someone might pick this up for their uh, variety registry. Um, it's a pretty point as, as possibly yeah. like a, a placeholder in case another higher grade example comes along. Now the label says DDR on it. Is that misleading? It's just an RPM, correct? No, no there is a double die DDR. reverse. There is a double die reverse also. Yeah. Is there doublings elsewhere than what is seen on the mint mark? Yes. yes. Um, it is on the. Let me see here. I'm looking at the cherry pickers guide. Right there. Yeah, it's not, it's right there. Okay. Does Variety Vista give it an RPM number? It's RPM uh, number one. Yeah. Okay. And the main diagnostic is Unum. Look at Unum. That's where you see the most doubling. Let's not forget mint marks were hand punched into the dies. Yes. Prior to uh, 89. So. Yeah. So the DDR was already there. Yeah, you can kind of see it on the M there a little you can bit. See a, a little bit of a split right there. Yep. Is that? Am I looking at that right? Or yep, is that, that is correct. It's on that side. That's interesting. A double variety. Oh. Oh. Okay. It says here on the comments on the cherry picker guide. Most of the value for this variety is for the significant RPM. Note that the mint mark photo in the previous edition was incorrect. Ah. What edition do you have? Are you looking at? I'm looking at fifth edition, volume two. So on your fifth so edition. Here's, here's the fourth edition. Well, that's what I got. You do. I got a too. And that's a what is it? Forty-six S. Okay, 
Captain Jigga, that's a good answer uh, or good question. Uh, what's a registry set? Um, essentially, it's a, it's a competitive where where you register with the third party graders um, coins that you own, and it, it they kind of keep like a ranking of um, uh, kind of who has what, who has the best whatever set, best proof, you know, set of Jefferson nickel proofs or circulated um, full step nickels uh, for cents and be who has the most, um, you know, you know, key, like a key date, key date set or something like that. There's several categories, but each one of them has a different Wait, one. What did you say? 40? Yeah. 46 cents. Oh, oh I'm. <laughs> 42? What the hell? 42. I, I have the book open to the page, and as far as I can tell, the right picture of the RPM is there. Yeah. Anyway. RPM huh. and DDR. Um, yeah, FS501. Well, what he said was that the, the picture of the RPM was actually the wrong photo. Oh, it sure looks right to me. But it looks right to me. Huh. So, so. Why don't I put that on there then? <laughs> And it says the RPM yeah. is quadrupled. Yeah, it did. No, it did say that. I did read that at the bottom. So, um, it just makes me wonder why PCGS only sets it's a it's a dual RPM. Uh, I don't know. It says oh, most yeah, of the value for this variety is for the significant RPM. Yeah, it's a very cool RPM though. I mean, and it's got the double die reverse with it too. So, and you know what's funny is this: this is the fourth edition of the Cherry Pickers Guide, and they've got for value MS sixty six one hundred and fifty. <laughs> yeah, those values can be a little bit off. A little. It's just Sean, funny. Sean, didn't you talk about registry sets in your recent one of your recent videos? I talk about them, about them pretty much on every Monday market report because I, I highlight a lot of post-1900 moderns on there. And that's usually the driving force for a lot of the real life sales of some of those newer coins. Like, you know, who, who can really justify, uh, for example, I talk about a 57D Lincoln set that ended up grading like a mid-state 68, yet it still managed to sell for nearly $10,000. That is all registry set all day long. It's, it's a points date system. Yeah, You assemble the best of every date of a specific series um, or low ball. Low ball coins also have Low ball, pwned, that's another one. Um, yeah, there, there's a couple of different um, classifications. I mean, you could easily go on PCGS or NGC's website mm -hmm. and look at all of the different types of registries you could put together. But at the end of the day, it's all for bragging rights, you know. And you know, in bragging rights, it, um, in PCGS's case, they do offer um uh, yearly awards they also give you grading vouchers and stuff like that so it's not like you know that you're getting like this huge trophy that's or a cash prize or anything like that it's just bragging right where you you know you, you're really you know yeah it's more bragging rights than anything else and um i always tell people when it comes to registry sets especially moderns do not invest in any of that because the moment that that next example comes out in a 68 that's just going to kill the value of all the other coins uh of the same grade paula we have a special guest we do my daughter's in chat Andrew <laughs> Mickey. hi bethany <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah, Chris um, is on. So Eubanks has been asking. Um, you know, he sent us that beautiful um, flip over, cap die, double struck, everything else, mis mix, mismatch, 1995, that one of a kind thing that uh, Mike Diamond had never seen before. 
I believe it was Mike Dunn when he sent it to. Um, he's been asking for a couple of weeks where if he should send it to Annex or send it to NGC. Here's the issue that you guys probably don't know about. Um, even Mike Diamond said he's not sure that any of the TPGs are going to attribute that coin correctly. Um, I told James, if you're gonna, I if it was mine, I'd probably send it to Annex along with the letter from Mike Diamond. I think that's your best bet of having it attributed correctly on the, on the slab. And it's cheapest, but um, I would definitely get it. I if you're gonna send it in, you know, worst case scenario, they don't attribute it correctly, but you still have the attribution in the article from Coin World from Mike Diamond. So if you ever go to sell it, you've got it. You've got that proof right there. Yeah, if, um, if Mike Diamond was struggling with it, then there's no way yeah. a third party grader is going to get it right because they get basic stuff wrong a lot. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. All the you time. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's people that are trained in grading skills, not necessarily varieties and errors. So, you know, oh. it, it, they get it wrong a lot when it comes to errors. And if it's a, a real specialty error and like a really rare one off type of thing, they're not going to get it right. Yeah, it, he's got he's got the he's got it going for him that it was written up in Coin World. Yeah, well then, like that. then the only thing the only way you're going to be able to get it graded is probably like you said, send it to Annex with that all that provenance. If you have that provenance, then they'll they'll probably put it on the label for you. But that that's about all you can do, and unfortunately, it's not going to be in the most desirable encasements. No, but it'll be I like, safe. I like I like Annex and I do too. Yeah, you know, they they are you know the the pretty much the first ones to do it. So I don't understand why they're not more popular. Everybody loves PCGS. It's, it's just a marketing thing, in my opinion. But mm -hmm. um, you know that that's what you got to do if you yeah. want it in a slab. That's probably the only place I would send it. Good point. Yeah. Max. Good point. That's, yeah, it, yeah, it's Donna a ninety-five. Max, it. It's a ninety-five. It's a zinc scent. It's a little bit compromised already, so I would get it in a slab if it was my coin. Well, if it's already starting to be compromised, you, want, you might want to pay for conservation services if they have it as well. And then, because and if, it, if it's already starting to to be compromised, it's not going to stop being inside of a slab. Yeah. You got to do something to stop it from happening. And unfortunately, that's what we have to do with these uh, copper plated zinc scents. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was just metal detecting last week, this past weekend, and I was digging coins up that were, you know, they were shield scents. So 2010 and newer, and they were almost half gone already. And that was in mulch at a playground. So these things are, they're, they're no good. Good, James. Good. Yeah. I mean, give it a shot. You know, it's it's cheap. You know, it doesn't cost a lot. Annex is very reasonable. And they're always running specials. Always running specials. One thing I, I found, I, I actually took a bunch of coins to a show. Um, <laughs> like, boy, that had to be before COVID because there haven't been any shows around me lately. But I knew Annex was going to be at this show, so I had a bunch of coins I was going to take. I had an uncirculated 96D with lathe lines on it. I had a Black Beauty. I had a couple, oh, my 95D double die obverse. Uh, I had a bunch of really good stuff, and they wouldn't grade any of it because... Um, most of them weren't recognizing the cherry pickers guides. I didn't have any provenance with any of them. And it just, it really didn't turn out like I thought it was going to turn out. So Annex? What? Yeah, that was Annex. Wow. wow. Yep. Yeah, I, I had a lot of trouble. And maybe it was just that representative that was at the show that was giving me a hard time. But like I said, I had a, I had a bunch of stuff. And it's all, it's all relatively well-known stuff. And uh, they just wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Hmm. 
it, it was it was too much of a hassle and not worth the trouble for me. So I know I knew what they were. So it was just kind of a, a trial thing for me to dip my toes in the water a little bit. And I was always skeptical of them anyway. And that kind of helped make up my mind a little bit further. So I know a lot of you guys love sending your coins in for grading. But to me, I think it's just a waste of money. I know what I have. I don't need to pay someone else to put it on a label for me. So. No, I've, I've said it before. I've only ever sent one in um, other than the one that Tim Ratchin sent in for me, sent in myself to PCGS, my half dime that I have. But other than these error coins that I, I bought that lot and I never intended on sending them in to be graded, but Annex was running that special. So I sent, I thought, you know, I'm, these are staying with me. I'm not planning on selling them. There, as long as I can hold on to them, if I don't ever get in a situation where I have to sell them, um, they're going to stay with me. So I wanted them in in a slab, mm -hmm. and it was the perfect time. So, so I sent twelve of my air coins in, and I forgot to send the one in that I really wanted to send in. <laughs> hey Jeff, do you want to answer Kyle's question? Black Beauties. Um, Jeff has a video about it. I do have a video about it. If somebody could, and you should go watch his video. Yeah, because it'll tell you. You'll learn a lot more than you will in the like two minutes that he can explain it here to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. But Kyle yeah. is uh, Kyle's a new newbie to us tonight. He's actually uh, awesome. he did send in a coin into the email. I'm not sure if it made the cut or not. It's under a different name, um, but uh, yeah. So hey, Kyle, what's up? I mean, welcome, Kyle. <laughs> Thank you. Are you? Did you follow Chris here? I don't know where he came from. I, I, <laughs> this is the guy I was telling you about, Paula. I thought. You know, I commented. I thought I commented on his post, but it was somebody oh, else. Who, right. He must have. He must have seen my comment, and uh, we've been talking back and forth. But uh, this is actually Jason, and he explained why he's using Kyle and everything. So that's cool. But yeah, uh, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle's Jeff, my Jeff's favorite the guy, character. <laughs> Jeff's the guy that's going to be able to answer your Black Beauty question the best. And if yeah. somebody put that link there for Amanda him, did. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you, Amanda. Amanda. Yeah, definitely go watch that because you will learn a lot more watching that video um, than, I mean, he could give you kind of a basic, but you're not going to, It's he's not going to be able yeah. to really, you'll, um, you'll be able to identify one if you go watch his video. And, and if you're still stuck after that, um, there is a uh, Jefferson Nickel Facebook page um, that, uh, you can go to and post pictures and maybe ask a couple other questions. Um, a lot yeah, of guys. Yeah, the rule is you have to join our Facebook page first. <laughs> yeah, you have to join ours first. <laughs> and we'll send you over there. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, and I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to build some uh, good karma. Maybe they'll let me kind of promote us a little bit too. So. <laughs> uh, where'd Carl go? I think he must have lost his connection. Carl. You're missing Carl. I, I, Eric said, oh, it's 701. <laughs> it's kind of a notification for everyone that we're at the one and a half hour mark. Oh, let me. Carl's not, on. Carl is not as assertive as many of us on the panel. I think he gets frustrated that we all kind of sometimes, well, me mostly, talk over. <laughs> Especially He's you, got, Paul. I know most of these guys have been with me forever, so they're used to it. Carl's not quite used to it yet. <laughs> oh, I have to yell to you. Um, I'll read this one. Hi guys, I've had this coin for a while now, and I have no idea what it is. It's from a coin reveal from Chuck Daughtry. In the pictures, it shows the reveal. What reveal it is, and the time is one hour and seventeen minutes is when the coin is there. Chuck said he had no idea what it was. He even looked at the edges and said said nothing to say damage. 
Thanks. Uh, well, that was my answer to him. <laughs> 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 Ooh, okay. Um, so anyway, Joe McBride sent this coin in uh, to me and asked me if uh, you know what what I thought it was, and I, to be honest, uh, I thought we could look at it. There's Carl. Welcome back, Carl. Oh. I hope we got better pictures. I hope he sent us I better did send pictures. the. I did. He's sending new pictures. I don't. I it's on the reverse. For those. Yeah. And there's some close-ups of it also. Um, just for future, you guys, screenshots suck. <laughs> this is this is not. No, that's he, picture, he sent me updated photos. These are yeah. not screenshots. No, oh, the that's... other ones I can see down there, I think, are still the same. Those are from his microscope. I think he probably took a photo of his microscope. He's got oh, one of those ones. With those the... suck, too. Yeah, I don't like those. Were there others that I missed? Nope. I think you got them all. These are the updated photos. It looks like some sort of structure. Yeah, I thought that it looked a little bit like maybe like a why a metal fragment of some sort or a structural lamination structure scrap structure something yeah um even piece of wire yeah. that's what i thought like a wire fragment yeah. and actually whatever it was it almost looks like some of it was left behind Still in it's there it's yeah. starting to corrode or yeah. whatever it, it looks like it reacted to it yeah Little bristle. Yeah, that could be it too, like from a brush. From them polishing the dyes. That, yep. That's actually probably what it is. It's probably the very tip of uh, a, a wire metal br uh, brush bristle. Mm -hmm. yep. Usually they're pointed at the end. And they're steel too. So uh, over time, uh, they will react to moisture and that, you know, they won't get dark like that. Yep. <clears throat> That's that's my. I say struck through uh, wire. No fragment. Yep. Second yeah. Second that. Yeah. All right. This is going to be our last coin. Hey. This one. Hold on to your horses, folks. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Paul is going to tell us all about this one. <laughs> Who? Paula. Oh. Paula, you're up. All right. <laughs> Good morning, Sean. I'm not Sean. <laughs> my name is Josh, and my three kids and I subscribe to Blue Ridge and li live the videos. Love the videos. I think I'm more amazed that they actually sit and pay attention without fidgeting all over the place, LMAO. Um, please, please make them avoid one of his videos. <laughs> yeah, maybe two or three. Maybe two or three. <laughs> maybe two or three. <laughs> um, if, if Sean gets really, he he's really he gets I'm excited sometimes. I, I'm really impassioned about the hobby and, yep. and the, sa the safety of our esteemed <laughs> collector base. I was wondering if I could receive your help by identifying this coin that my 14 year old daughter found. Okay, I'm not jealous. At first I thought <laughs> someone just pressed the image into a cheap piece of metal, but I'm not sure. It also is completely readed around the coin. Thanks for your help and hope all is well. Keep up the great videos, Josh. And Sean says, you're welcome. And I love this coin. And I don't know why all the new people have to find all the good stuff. <laughs> so it's it's a little light. It's a little <laughs> light. There is. Just a little. A little Just light on the loafers. <laughs> yeah, that's it on the left there. 
Can we... It looks a little bit like a piece of foil, kind of. You know what's funny? I, I would actually like to see what uh, our audience thinks it is. Oh, good idea. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, folks, take a look at this and type in the comment section your best guess of what this is. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Maybe we can give the person who gets it right a book. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. Mm. How about that? That's nice. First person to give the correct answer wins a strike it right to the pocket change book. It's, How about that? This one's a little hard to see, but this is actually the coin right here on the. <laughs> no, you can't play. I don't think we should say oh, no to cool. any answer. I think we should just acknowledge the first right one. Okay. Keep That's guessing. My opinion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blues, you're so silly. What did Blues say? Taco? He wants to play. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it. It's an error. <laughs> How about David? Did he get it correct? No. Well, the terminology is pretty important. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I think that David got it I pretty, think he got I, it I pretty close. David. He got it pretty close. I think we should say David got it right. I think I think so too. Because that's pretty close. It's a, it's awfully close. As a matter of fact, on my recent PCMR, my pocket change report, there was also a penny that was exactly separate or similar to that. So that's sold. Yes. Yeah. So what, David Carla? Congratulations, David Carlisle. Please send us your shipping information to our address info at livecoinqa.com. Congratulations and good eye. So what this is, is this is actually a clad layer. Um, this Single made it layer. to, made it all the way to the striking chamber um, and, and was struck. So this is actually a spendable coin. It's considered a coin, even though it's only on clad layer. Um, probably what happened with this um, is that it was at the end of the roll and instead of having the sandwich with the middle, the copper core in the middle, the clad layer was a little bit past at the end of the roll and got punched out. That's probably what happened. And um, let's think could, about this for a second, Paula. Okay. If that is true. That means there has to be more of these somewhere. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And from what I've read, now there are other ways that can happen. Um, it can just be a bonding issue where the clad layers didn't bond and came apart um, sometime before they reached the striking chamber. But the most common way that this happens is by what I said, that there, that that's, top or bottom um, of the cladding layers are past the end of the strip when they get punched. You can actually have two clad layers that get punched together without a copper core. That's a different error. But um, yeah, this is, a, this is a super cool, cool error. And you can see how most, like Chris pointed out that most of the time, and especially with this being so, so thin, how how much of the detail is actually still struck into the coin. Um, so there must have been some, some good pressure in that striking chamber. But most of the time, the, the details are super, super weak. Uh, you know, I'd be willing to bet if this was a quarter we would not have near the the detail we do because of the stroke of the dies. A dime is yeah. much thinner than a quarter, so the yeah. stroke of the dies is is closer together. So it, it's kind of a cool thing to happen with a dime because you're you're going to get all that detail. 
Yeah, and, and the examples I saw of the quarter ones were really super mushy. Like, right, right. That's what I'm saying. And and this, you know, for this to make it through the entire minting process and then get out into circulation, and God knows how long this was out in circulation, for it not to be bent or damaged severely is just truly amazing. So yeah, you'll never, um, you never know what you're going to find. Joe Sharp, I don't see this error very often. I cannot imagine. I imagine that it's probably pretty high up on the rarity. I mean, um, I, I can't imagine that this is super co common because you think about it, if it's at the end of the strip and those, it's just that thin little piece of the strip that's punched out, there's not going to be a whole lot of, of planchets created from that. So and I who knows how many actually made it through the entire process. Yeah. yeah. And didn't get picked out or. Yeah. So. If, you're, if you're going to put a rarity scale to this coin, it's probably like an R5, which means there's probably less than 100 of these in existence. You know, and that's I, I'm probably being a, a little bit. I don't know. Conservative with that number, yeah. Maybe. But yeah, they, there, there's not a whole lot of these. I'm, I'm sure through the quality control processes, this is the type of coin that gets picked out and then waffled at the end, you know. Yeah, yeah, or just tossed. I mean, I I watch heritage auctions and the um, error auctions a lot, and I have made. I think I've seen this come up once. Um, I've seen it a couple times on a quarter, but I think on a dime, I've seen it come up once. Um, so I don't remember who it was that sent this in, but your daughter, this is a great find. Josh. Josh, congratulations Josh. to yeah. Josh. Congratulations to your daughter. And, um, I hope that this makes a forever air collector out of her. Yeah, I will. And I, I hope that she watches the show with you. I'm definitely going to reach out to them i had reached out for maybe some more pictures um yeah, i gave them some fantastic. suggestions but I, i'll still show the pictures the, the you know next time we're on just to show them off again yeah but, let him know to please have his daughter if they have youtube watch us um we try to keep it family friendly um yeah. well, and we you know the more we young kids we get into the hobby the longer this hobby is going to be around so yeah I will make sure that they know that uh, we showed it and uh, that uh, she she definitely needs to see this. And but, she's a girl. Exactly. Exactly. She's a girl, girl power. You know, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the rarest error coin that we have shown yet. I think so. I mean, now we've had know. we've had some really good varieties, um, but as far as error coins go, I think this one takes the um, cake so far. I am so glad we had our discussion. This, I mean, sir, this this I brought this up this afternoon. I was going through emails and I looked at it, and I really wanted another opinion. Even though I I do errors, and I do more varieties than errors, but I, I really wanted a, another set of eyes on this. Um, yeah, James Eubanks, nothing against yours, because yours is a oh, that, one of a kind. Yeah. I mean, for sure. And we're to I think Chris is referring more to the known errors. Um, yours one that I, I, I never seen didn't before. see uh James yeah. coin, so I'm not sure uh what exactly that was. Was that yeah. on it's in Coin World? It's it's in Coin World. I'll send you the article. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you the article. Um, it, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, we need more we need more latents in the hobby. That's for yes. sure. Yes, we yeah. do. Because yeah, we it, it doesn't need to be the hobby of grumpy old men anymore. <laughs> it is the yeah. hobby. Of, it is the hobby of kings. But you know, we need a few queens in there. What do the kings do without the queens? You know, they'd never get their laundry done. Whatever. I mean, I was looking for some uh, graded examples. There's not a whole lot of <laughs> stuff no. out there on it, so that's a good thing. No. 
Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of pretenders that are similar to it, uh, but are not the same. Like uh, a plant should now split before it was struck. Yeah. You know, but you'll, you'll have the, uh, the striations and the, the greening in there. Um, now, how many of these are found and thrown and just tossed out as garbage? You know? What a Maybe. shame. A lot, yeah. a lot of, a lot of <laughs> people will look at that and think it's either damage or fake. Yeah. And I think had he, I think that, and this is, I mean, I'm going to toot our horn for a minute. Um, I think that there are many groups or people that he would have asked that would have given probably the wrong advice on this because error, error collecting and error, it, it really is a specialty and there's a lot to learn and to identify things like this. And even people who've been doing it a long time can misidentify things like this. I, um, I remember when I, st I started thinking, hey, look at this weird dryer coin. Yeah, I was in the middle. I, mean, I, screwed, up. I screwed up on it. I'll I'll freely admit it. That's why we have to, you know, we we work together as a team on this. Stuff. But your, you know, your your thing is Jeffersons and and Buffaloes and things like that. We all have things that we specialize mm -hmm. in. I mean, I errors are my what I am passionate about, and so I'm constantly studying them and learning. And I will never learn it all, never. I mean, Chris and I banter back and forth. We'll go back and forth. I'm constantly picking his brain. I'm picking, you know, Joe Cronin, Ken Potter, Mike Diamond. I drive these people nuts probably. Um, Chris was the very my very first person that, you know, he was my first mentor. I, I discovered Paula Bloom, just putting that out there. He made me what I am today. He made me what I am today. No, there he honest to God, he gave he gave me confidence. He taught me so much. He was always available. He was never rude to me. Um yeah, I think probably because he saw how passionate I was about I wanted I really wanted to learn. But then we became no, it, friends. It's because, it's because you were in Bill. That's all. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Careful, we, we got we got kids. I'm just kidding. Watching the show. Not Stop. So Stop it. Anyway, he really was my. I mean, I've known. I have known Christopher since I've been in this hobby. Probably, I, I think I met him before I even met Ken. Yep. I've, I've I've known you for a long time. Yeah, and, you and uh, Amber and Amber, mm -hmm. Jessica. Um, mm -hmm. Back then, Sylvia, Sylvia was on Facebook. Yep. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to go. I got a beautiful woman waiting for me, and it's okay. Past my Tell her I said hi. Thank you, guys. It's been Thank a great day. You know, and that was that was our last coin, so we're. Thanks for being here, Chris. We appreciate you. How are you doing, man? <laughs> I like Jeff's comment in the private chat. That's a good one. Oh, I'm nice. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> what's what's the what's the casting couch? Chris. Ah, stop it! Did you tell him? Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. You sicko. Hey, Chris. Good night. Hey, got, hey, guys, that couch is for fans only. It's a pullout couch. I can't. I... Behind really, really Behind a bed. I meant. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. Hey, you put it on the spot, huh, Paula? Oh, good. Stop it, guys. Stop it. Stop it. Guys, our, you, you know, you're going to scare our guest away. He's going to be like, I'm going on that show. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We're, we're going to have to fight for 25 more subs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, thanks well, for good, coming, everybody. Great um, coins tonight.
Very Great good. points. Please Ooh, keep awesome. sending us the amazing questions. Like I said, don't just, you know, if you've got a uh, any kind of question about coins or anything, and it's not about a specific coin, if you just want to know what a certain acronym means or whatever, send us the question. We'd actually really welcome those. Every once in a while, it's nice to kind of take a break from researching coins and stuff like that and just answering questions. So join our Facebook group, um, Coin Q&A on Facebook. Uh, we have a website, um, livecoinqa.com, which will give you tons of resources on there to find out information, do your own research. Um, David, was it, it was David that won the book? Yeah, he said he sent his email, so. Awesome, awesome. Um, we will be same time, same channel next week. And then normally we take the, the last Monday of the month off, but this month we have a special guest that's going to be joining us. So please, please, please uh, hit that subscription and the bell so that you'll be notified. We'll be putting a video up with the announcement of that, um, sometime before that. And thanks everybody for coming. Thank nice. you guys. We that appreciate a great week. Every one of you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.